I V M. Hi, I'm Utsav, a behavior researcher by training and a slow traveler by passion. Postcards from Nowhere is a travel podcast where I condense a decade of travel experiences and explore not just the where but also the why and how to travel. My stories emerge from slow traveling the less explored parts of the world: Bosnia and Herzegovina, Armenia, Uzbekistan, and even China. At the end of each story, I give practical tips and new ideas about how to travel better. This week, we travel to Rajasthan and trace the complex history of the desert state, its relationship with Europe, and discover how we are all Hungarians of Rajasthan. In 2012, a Hindi film based on a decoy living in the Chambal Valley of northwestern India opened to critical acclaim. The protagonist was not just a decoy, but was once a subedar in the 51 Engineer Regiment, Bengal Engineer Group, based at Roorkee. The story of how a subedar in the army became a decoy in Chambal has a milestone. He represented India in the 1958 Asian Games in Tokyo. He went on to become the national champion in steeplechase and remained so for seven years, with his national record standing for a decade. The character was essayed brilliantly by the late Irfan Khan, with searing pithy lines such as "Bihar mein to baghi hote hain, dakhat milte hain parliament mein," which means in the badlands of Chambal you find rebels. To find dakhats, one must go to the parliament. The biopic was named after the athlete himself, Pan Singh Tomar. But there is one thing about Pan Singh Tomar that one does not think about: his roots. For he comes from the Tomar clan. They are Rajputs from Rajasthan, and claim Chandravanshi descent, and thus claim Arjun from the Mahabharat was one of their forebears. But there is a lesser known part of the history of the Tomars, which opens up a forgotten chapter in Indian history. In the ancient town of Iran, in the Sagar district of Madhya Pradesh, there exists a red sandstone inscription on the body of the animal boar. It is eight lines of Sanskrit. the first 3 of which are in meter and the rest in prose it is carved on the neck of a free standing 11 feet high red sandstone varaha statue a zoomorphic iconography of the vishnu avatar and it's dated to the 6th century the inscription names king toramana ruler of the alcan huns as ruling over malwa alcan huns toramana yes you heard that right The Tomars are descendants of the Han chief Toramana, who ruled northern India in the fifth and the sixth centuries. The Huns were a group of Central Asian tribes who entered India by the Khyber Pass around the fifth or the sixth century. They made deep inroads into India, going as far as Malwa in Madhya Pradesh and Kashambhi in Uttar Pradesh. The Huns were also known as the Hunas, and their main religion was most likely shamanism and worship of nature spirits. Even today, if you go around the villages of Meerut, Ghaziabad, Bulandshahar, and Greater Noida, you would find plenty of people with the surname Han or Hun. In 2018, a Hungarian historian, Kovacs Imre Bon, claimed that there is a connection between the Rajput Chauhan kings of Rajasthan and the Huns of Hungary. He backs the theory that Chauhans entered modern-day India during the rule of the Alcan Huns. This has been documented by Chinese Buddhist monks. Sun Yun who visited India in the 6th century and Huang Sang who visited in the 7th century and they refer to them as white huns Burn forwards the theory that the Mongol tribe Chao and the Huns united to form Chauhans The Huns of Hungary have over 300 totems most of which are identical to the totems of Chauhans The surname Chauhan is very common in Hungary which he claims is a version of the Chauhan surname in India Further he connects the worship of the Baba goddess whose characteristics are similar to the Amba goddess worshiped by the Rajputs and finds architectural similarities between the Shakambari Mata temple in Sambhar Rajasthan and the temples in Hungary and while this remains an emerging and unconfirmed area of research we have more definitive proof of the Huns or the Hungarians being in northwestern India through a rapidly evolving branch of science population genetics because it's not only the Tomars or the Rajputs who trace their ancestry to the Huns. In 2017, two scientists, David Mahal and Ianis Matsaukas, 
published a paper tracing the origins of the Jat community in India. The paper uses DNA analysis, specifically the Y chromosome, to identify genetic markers. These genetic markers are then traced on the Y chromosome haplogroup tree, which helps us understand the geographic origins and the migratory paths of ancestors. The study demonstrated that based on their genetic makeup, about 90% of the Jats in the sample belong to only four different lines of ancestry and geographic origins. The study demonstrated that based on their genetic makeup, about 90% of the Jats in the sample belong to only four different lines of ancestry and geographic origins. But before I tell you about the different lines of ancestry, I want you to count the number of countries or regions you encounter in these lines. The first haplogroup, haplogroup L's origins, can be traced to the rugged and mountainous Pamir North region in Tajikistan. The second haplogroup R's to somewhere in Central Asia. This is one of the largest haplogroups in India and Pakistan. The third haplogroup Q has its origin in Central Asia. Descendants of this group are linked to the Huns, Mongols and Turkic people. In Europe, it is found in southern Sweden, among Ashkenazi Jews, and in central and eastern Europe, such as the rhone alps region of France, southern Sicily, southern Croatia, northern Serbia, parts of Poland and Ukraine. The fourth, haplogroup J, originates in the Middle East area known as the Fertile Crescent, comprising Israel, the West Bank, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria and Iraq. Middle Eastern traders brought this genetic marker to the Indian subcontinent. So I counted at least 15 different nationalities and four distinct regions in the world from which 90% of the Jats trace their ancestry. The Rajputs and the Jats form a very significant part of the population in the Gangetic Plains and the Aravalli Ranges of India. And yet, these endogamous communities trace their ancestry to at least 15 different nationalities. As we traverse the political and socio-religious landscape of India, instead of identifying as belonging to a certain community, religion or even country, we must identify as people who are a product of a very diverse gene pool. In a country which is seeing an ethno-nationalist narrative take over a secular one, we must remind ourselves that we are all Hungarians from Rajasthan. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IBM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Utsav Memory on Twitter and YV Travel 42 on Instagram. 